Hello, Trinity. Today is the 40th day after Easter, a day we celebrate the ascension of Jesus. And I want us to think about that for a moment. As we think of the ascension of Jesus, maybe one of the things we wonder is, why did Jesus ascend? It's a pretty good question. We talk about Jesus' ascension almost every Sunday when we confess the creed, especially in the second article of the Apostles' Creed. I'd like to read that for you now. We confess, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. That second article of the Creed speaks about Jesus. When we think of the, the church year and the life of the church, we celebrate all the major events of Jesus' life. Well, we just confess that Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, and we gather in God's house, and we sing songs, and we hold candles, and we marvel that our God would take the form of a man, a baby, to walk among us. And as we confess in that creed of he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, we think of the events of Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. We meditate on the passion and the death of Jesus. Then, of course, the third day he rose again from the dead. That's the Easter celebration. We celebrate the victory that Jesus has over sin and death and Satan himself to bring us life and forgiveness. And then we come to today. He ascended into heaven. Some congregations have a worship service today, which is a good thing. Our congregation historically has not had ascension worship services. It's something that we'll celebrate this coming Sunday. We typically celebrate it on the Sunday closest to the ascension. Why did Jesus ascend? You know, as we think about the ascension of Jesus, maybe we would think of how nice it would be for him to stay here to walk among us. But as we think about that, I want you to think about your own life. And think about a trip that you have taken. Maybe it was a trip to vacation and you went and visited someplace. Maybe it was a work trip that, that you had to go somewhere. Maybe it was a trip with some friends. How many times in that trip were you interrupted with phone calls or emails or things that you have to take care of back at home? Or when you're gone, who does take care of the home, the yard, the bills, the responsibilities? Many of those things fall on us, and we have to tend to things when we get back home. And, and we get back home, that's where we're supposed to be, and we take care of all of the responsibilities that we have. So it is with Jesus. Jesus ascended into heaven, and as we confess in the Apostles' Creed, he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. That's where Jesus belongs. That's where he rules. That's what Ephesians chapter 1 talks about, where Jesus rules with all authority in heaven and on earth. And God has placed all of his enemies under his feet, under his footstool. There in the right-hand throne of God, Jesus rules as king. Think about that for a moment. As king, Jesus is ruling over everything. In the universe, in the world, in our lives. And he does that by his throne at the right hand of God. That's where he belongs to rule and direct everything in accordance with his will, and we trust in him, that he is at work even in challenging situations and difficult times. Jesus is the one who is at work accomplishing the will of his Father and our Heavenly Father. But I'd also like you to think about this in another way, why Jesus ascended into heaven. We might think that'd be nice for Jesus to walk on earth, a lot like he did in the New Testament times. 
when he was able to walk around people and just reach out and heal them or just speak a word and there was healing and he brought the dead back to life. <laughs> that would be remarkable. But also difficult. Think about it for a moment. If Jesus lived on this earth, think of all the people who'd want to speak with Jesus. How would he do that? Would he set up an office? Our office for our synod is the International Center for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is in St. Louis, Missouri. Maybe, maybe he'd set up an office in St. Louis. Maybe he'd set up an office in Jerusalem. Maybe you'd have office hours from nine to five. And the only way you'd come, would be able to come and speak to Jesus would be in person. And, and you know, sometimes when there's a popular place, maybe you got to take a number. What number would you think you'd have in that line of people <laughs> who would want healing from Jesus or to speak to Jesus? Maybe it'd be the number 3,254,112. And there'd be somebody saying, okay, that's your number. Hang on to it. Jesus will be with you in about 15 years. <laughs> it's not feasible. No, Jesus ascends into heaven. And what does he promise? He is with us always. We don't have to go to an office. We don't have to go to where he is physically in order to be able to speak with Jesus or to receive his care. No, he promises to be with us always always. And he does that by ruling in heaven there at the right hand of God. In fact, scripture speaks about that promise of Jesus being with us always. It's in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. You hear these words, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's where Matthew's gospel ends and after that, Jesus ascends into heaven as John, or as Luke records and Acts records the ascension. And he gives us the promise that he is with you always, reigning there in heaven. And just as we confess that he is there in heaven, he also promises to come back to take you to be with him when he returns. And we look forward to that day. As we celebrate this day of ascension, yes, we see Jesus ascend into heaven where we aren't able to see him face to face. But we know by his power and his authority, he continues to rule over everything in this world, even our lives. And he promises to be with you always, even to the very end of the age. May that promise bring you the comfort, the peace, the strength that you need today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you ascended into heaven in accordance with the will and plan that God, our Heavenly Father, had for you, that you may sit at his right hand to rule over everything. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to rule, that your will would be done in this world, that your will would be done in our lives as your children. Send your spirit upon us to always trust in you, in your word and the working that you are doing in our lives and in this world. Though we are not able to see you face to face, assure us of your presence in our lives, to know that you are with us always, even to the very end of the age. Thank you, Lord, for that comfort, for the promise to know that you are with us no matter where we are or where we go. Continue to assure your people of your presence that they may have the confidence that they are not alone, but they are wrapped in your love because you are with them forever. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>